On the 1st of September 2004, the city of Baslan is about to be in a terrible situation. The city of Baslan is in the northern part of the Caucasus and it's in the part of Chechnya, Russia and it has a population of 35,000 people. There is a school in this city and September 1st is going to be the first day of school where there's going to be 800 students and about 60 teachers and custodians. At this time, there's a separatist group that's getting closer to this school and they have all types of weapons. They had been working on this plan for many months in a way where it's September 1st, where it's going to be the first day of school, they are completely ready for this attack. The terrorist group did this so they don't have to carry a bunch of supplies and weapons on the day of the attack. They have everything to their disposal whenever they need. But first, let's see why these separatist groups decided to do such thing and hold up a hostage situation in a school. If you remember, or maybe you know history, in the year 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed into 15 different republics. One of the republics that really wanted to be separated from Russia is Chechnya. But everything they did, Russia did not allow this to happen. This republic is extremely poor and most of the population is Muslim. And in the year 1991, when they weren't allowed to have their own country, terrorist separatist groups started to form all around the area. One of these groups is the same one that caused the Baslan school siege. The group's name was Riazo Salahin and their leader was this guy, Shamil Basayev. Shamil was a full-blown terrorist. Not only was he a separatist for Chechnya, but he would kill his own people to send a message. And anyone that was against him or against his group and ideology, they would be eliminated. Shamil Basayov and his men and this terrorist organization decided the best thing we can do and get the most amount of attention from the Russian government is to take over a school and hold a hostage situation. At first they didn't want to hold a hostage regularly but they realized that the school is the perfect choice for them. There's a whole lot of children and there are buildings where they can hold them. This is when they started planning this and taking weapons there in the summertime. And when you get to September 1st, this is when they're getting closer to the school early in the morning. It was 8 in the morning and the first bell rang, all the kids went to class and 23 men of this terrorist organization got closer to the school. The first thing they did, these 23 men went to each classroom heavily armed and told the teacher and the students to follow him to the gymnasium and if anyone tried to do something smart they would be shot so every person listened and followed these terrorists to the gymnasium they also took every single employee that was on the ground that day to the gymnasium so there was nobody around the school and when you added all of them 1100 people were being held in the gymnasium and since it was an enclosed building they could very easily control it and no one was able to get in or get out and out of the 1100 people 777 of them are children when everything was in control shamo's group sent a message to the russian government their message was if you want us to release the hostages make chechnya free and also released every chechnyan separatist from russian prisons the Russian government does not answer the first day and we get to the second day, September 2nd, 2004. This is when negotiations started between the Chechnyans and the Russians. But it seems like they wouldn't reach common ground on anything and it was like a yelling competition. When this is happening, there's some shooting inside the gymnasium and a small explosion. These were the teachers that were trying to escape this facility without the terrorists realizing but they saw him and shot at them. This news reaches the Russian government and that basically means the negotiations are being pointless. We haven't even spoke about anything and you're already killing hostages. Before the Russians started to negotiate with the Chechnyans, they had already got their special forces ready and they were getting closer to the school, basically surrounding the entire area. But on the second day, they started the negotiation just to buy some time. So in a way, the Russians were stealing time from the Chechnyans and keeping them busy until the special forces got closer and closer to the school without them realizing. But it seems like one of the 23 terrorists see one of the special forces guys and immediately came inside to inform his men. And this is when they all got ready and nothing was being said. 
In a way, the terrorist group was getting ready for a war with the Russian special forces or explode the whole gymnasium because they had put bombs in place in the summertime. In a situation like this, it's called a Mexican standoff. It's a term that basically originated from the Wild West, where you're stuck in a pickle and you don't know what to do. If you do anything, you're dead. Both of them were stuck in a dead end. The negotiations had stopped, and the other party was waiting for the other party to do something. And between the dead end and the Mexican standoff, there is a whole lot of innocent people, mostly kids, stuck in between them, and they can't do anything. Either way, the shooting starts. And later on, nobody takes fault at this shooting because the other party says the other one started shooting first. The Riaza Salain group knew that their power is nothing against the Russian special forces. And as soon as the fire broke out, they immediately exploded all the bombs on sight. And after all those bombs exploded, the whole building caught on fire. A building with more than 1,000 people, mostly kids in there. A lot of people and children die of the explosion. A lot of them burn. A lot of people try to escape the gymnasium and get gunned down. Fire, explosion and getting fired at killed most of these people, mostly children. More than 330 people died and most of the children and people that escaped were injured and heavily burned. This attack is the biggest attack onto a school in the world. After the attack, a lot of Russian forces entered the entire vicinity of Chechnya to take control and they put some heavy rules and regulation so groups like this can't form anymore. For years on end, all the schools in that area were under control just in case a situation like this was about to go down so they would be ready for it. The news medias and outlets all around the world told the Russian government they made a mistake. What kind of a negotiation like that where more than 300 children are getting killed and gunned down? But it seems like the Russian government didn't care. They said this is the best we could do against people like this. There was no other way we could have solved this. After this, the Russian government also announced any separatist group that wants to be separated, we would like to negotiate with you. And it seems like they went towards the positive route because in Chechnya, an attack in a situation like this hasn't ended up happening. After this attack towards the school, a lot of people of Chechnya were extremely against these terrorist organization because they hated that their own children was put on the line for a separatist group. After the death of the children and the people, every day a sad news would come out. Like after a few weeks, they brought a burnt body, which was a mother's child. And the next day, she decided to take her own life. A lot of parents that lost their kids became alcoholics and many other problems. After this took place, a lot of news networks wanted to ask what Vladimir Putin, the president at the time, thought. The only thing he said was that we were weak and weak people get beaten. That's pretty much all he said. And then there was a ceremony in Moscow and more than 120,000 people participate in it. 